In part two, we will take the Mavic Mini outside on location and uh, take some of the knowledge that we gained during part one and put it to use. Going through everything from start to safe landing, including camera settings and testing out the flight modes. In case you missed part one or you want to jump to a specific section of this beginner's guide, I've included links with timestamps in the description below. Let's jump right in after the intro. Welcome to another video, I'm Henry Olsen and if you want to learn how to make better videos and get more information about your Mavic Mini in general, then consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. Select a wide open location where there's plenty of room to fly and then unpack your drone. Mount the sticks. And add in your phone. Consider adding the prop guards to the drone. The bonus is that it will not only protect your drone, but it will also make it look less intimidating in public space. It looks more like a toy when these are on. Power up the remote by tapping uh, the power button once and then a long press. And then make sure to fold out the antennas and put them in the right 45 degree angle position. Then you take out the drone and then you power it up with the same principle. One short press, then one long press and then put it on a flat surface. Then fire up the DJI Fly app. With the LEDs on the remote turning solid and the DJI Fly app launched, the drone will start to flash green. Press the blue uh, go button, then you get a basic uh, beginner's uh, tutorial that you can scroll through and study, or you can just watch the rest of this uh, video. Once you enter the main flight screen and you have a uh, image transmission, you're basically ready for takeoff. If you're close to metal surfaces or something else is disturbing the compass, you might be asked to calibrate it. I'll just show you how this process works. So you start the calibration process by pressing start. And then I normally pick up the aircraft like that. And I simply rotate like this. Then it asks you to tip the drone like this. And I simply just continue do the rotation until it confirms that the calibration is successful. Then we put down the drone again. Well, this is the process of calibrating the compass. You find a lot of tutorials that will uh, probably tell you that you need to calibrate your gimbal and as well as your IMU once in a while. I've never done this on a regular basis unless the drone was uh, starting to behave uh, pretty irregularly. So uh, I would not recommend doing that or messing around with that at all, unless your drone starts to behave strange. In general, this should not be necessary. So let's save that for another video. So we are ready to take off. And the way we take off is that we press the takeoff button here on the left side of the screen. Simply long press it. And then the drone will start. And hover into a safe position, some 1.5 meters above ground. As this is a mode two remote, then the left stick on the remote, if that's pushed up and down, the drone will uh, descend or it will ascend. Simply fly up and down. If you push the left stick to the sides, you will initiate the yaw motion. So anti-clockwise, clockwise. The right stick, that is the pitch and roll. The pitch is going forward, going backwards. If I push the right stick to the left, the drone will fly left. If I push it to the right, the drone will fly right. If you want to land the drone, you can either do it here on the, directly on the interface 
by this, or you can simply just push down on the throttle and just keep it down. Then the drone will simply safely land and turn off the propellers. Let's just try to do it through the interface. Take off again. Okay, then now we just land it through the app by pressing this one, long pressing uh, the land. Let's take off. In video mode, uh, the options to adjust the picture, especially when it's getting a little bit dark like now, is uh, very limited. But in the lower corner, you have something called the exposure compensation value. And that one can be adjusted to either overexpose or underexpose the picture. So let's just try and overexpose this by one stop. That makes it look a little bit better. Let's look at the recording options. You have in the video mode, you have a 2.7K, which is the default resolution of the camera. In this mode, you have the possibility to record either 30 frames per second or 25 frames per second. So there's unfortunately no 24 frames per second. But you can cheat a little bit. You can just record it in 30 and then slow it down in post-production to 80%. That would do the job. You also have the option to record in 1080p. That mode will add additional options for 50 or 60 FPS recordings. So let's just do a few recordings for the reference. 1080p, 60 frames per second. The manual PoE. Let's just bump down the exposure to zero again. It seems it's, uh, it's a little bit over brightened, so like that. So 60 FPS. So let's switch it into 2.7K. Like that, 2.7K, 30 frames per second. There you go, record. Apart from that, you have the quick shot modes. I cover those in a separate video, but let's just take one for the sake of it. Let's do the rocket. So just put down. So you can adjust the, the gimbal here, like I showed you, by using the handle here. So let's just pick me here as a rocket target, then just do a rocket. And with a rocket, uh, the drone simply uh, ascends at the same position, and then it just tilts the gimbal automatically while keeping me in frame. And the cool part here is that it actually returns back to the starting position once the quick shot has been done. I've covered the other modes as well, Drony, Helix and Circle. You can access those through this card. Also, you can take some pictures with the drone. It actually records 12 megapixel pictures. So let's just jump into the photo mode. So with this, we can take a photo, just frame it like this. Also in photo mode, it's put in automatic. So that means that you have the exposure values that you can either overexpose or underexpose the photo. According to my experience, it's much easier to recover an underexposed picture because it's easier to recover the dark areas in the picture than recover the blown out highlights. So my tip is to underexpose the picture a bit. You only have the exposure compensation value available during the video mode, but you actually have manual mode available in photo mode as well. So if you just click down here in the lower corner, you get the option to adjust the shutter and also the ISO, like we know from the normal advanced camera settings. But these are only available during the photo mode. Let's put it back in video mode. 2.7K, 30 frames per second. You get the best result here, yeah. The Mavic Mini also has uh, three different uh, flight modes and uh, one of them, the one that I'm using right now is uh, the position hold, which is uh, basically the one mode that you use for more or less everything. If, we, if you're tapping the three dots in the corner and go under control, you can basically put it into something called CineSmooth. Just a small tip, you don't need to go under the three dots here to change the flight mode. You can simply just tap the mode sign up here 
and then it will switch between the three different flight modes that is available. And Cinesmooth is uh, basically a little bit like tripod mode-ish. Uh, it sort of slows down all the motions, so it makes it much easier for you to do like these cinematic pans. And your motions uh, will basically not be that jerky. There's a lot of options with that. The drone goes a lot slower if you do this. So this is a nice option to have if uh, you want to frame a shot and, uh, and fly the, mo fly the moves uh, manual. Finally, there, of course, uh, there's a sport mode in here that will make it fly pretty fast, the drone. And the best way to demonstrate that is basically to go over here and go close to the ground. Because if you fly high up, there's not much to show. So if you fly low to the ground, it will really show how fast it goes when you fly sport mode. So let's just punch it, Bishop. There was a tree. <laughs> so the sport mode, that is a, a pretty fast mode. It's not so, uh, so nice uh, to capture some, uh, some of the, the good footage. If you want to do it like a manual point of interest in sport mode, it tends to be a little bit, the motions tends to be a little bit jerky. But it is possible. And it's nice to have that option to fly fast. So once you're done filming and uh, you basically want to bring the drone home, you could either fly it manually, of course, but you can also uh, use uh, the return to home function that is uh, designed for the purpose of bringing it home. So if you press the return to home button and keep it, you see now the drone will start returning to home. So it will basically go back to the position where it started. It will start the procedure by raising to the return to home altitude that you have set in the interface. And then it will go back until it's above the starting point and then it will simply land. You can anytime abort the, the return to home by pressing the red cross next to the landing indication. And this is why the altitude, the return to home altitude is so important because uh, the Mavic Mini has no sensors. So if there's any obstacles on the way back using a return to home, the drone will crash. So you wanna make sure that you set the, the return to home altitude in a safe height, like 30 meters or so, so it goes uh, above all the trees and so. So now it's coming back. And the position where it lands is not exactly where it took off, but it's, uh, it's pretty close by. Once you're safe back on the ground, then you can pack everything up nicely in the Fly More Combo case. And then hopefully you had some super cool footage uh, recorded. Actually, you can uh, see the footage that you have recorded uh, while you're on site. You simply just go back to the main screen. Then you simply just tap the album. Then you will see what you have recorded during the day. And it's not the same quality as uh, the original uh, footage that's on the card, but at least it would give you a good idea of uh, what's uh, going on or what you have recorded or if you have uh, captured uh, some really good footage during the day. Let's get everything packed up. We start by short press, long press to turn off the drone. And then we simply wrap it up. put out in the gimbal cover and store it in the, the fly more case. With the remote is the same procedure, short press, long press, and then the, the remote powers off. Then detach the phone and then take away all the, the handles and store them in the safe position. Like this. Close it down here, fold down the antennas, and then store the remote into the box. Like that. Did I leave out important information or do you want, simply want to contribute to clarification of this guide? Then let me know in the comment below. We can always catch up in a follow-up episode. Do you want to see more videos uh, made about the Mavic Mini? I've actually made a playlist with all the videos uh, that I have produced so far and will produce in the future. You can access this through 
this card. I hope you found some good information in this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like and share it with some of uh, your other drone fellas. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be back on the next one.